Hello, I'm Christopher Roberts and welcome to this documentary. Through the course of this short film, we'll be investigating whether football has become more business orientated or whether it's still primarily considered a sport as it was 30 years ago. We'll be interviewing chairmen, footballers and journalists to gather their opinion on the nation's favourite sport. So, is football a sport or a business? Let's find out. Changed from a working man spectator sport to probably a middle class sport spectator sport with having to have a really good disposable income to watch league football or premiership football. On a personal level, it's changed from being a supporter of the club, being like a, coming initially as a nine year old, ten year old in 1972, 73, to being the chairman of the club, you know, at the age of 44, uh, but more so. The football has changed from being more of a fun thing back in the 70s and 80s to being more business driven now because of the, the expenses paid to players, uh, coach travel and so, so on and so forth. So it is, it is changing and will continue to change over the years. I think in, in many ways really, uh, the, the biggest is perhaps the, uh, the media coverage of the game has uh, is, is, is completely uh, gone through the roof really over the last uh, three decades, in particular uh, since uh, Sky came onto the scene, you know, getting on for 20 years ago, um, it's, uh, that has really changed. I think the, um, I mean with the, the Heysel and Hillsborough disasters that, that brought uh, our grounds um, uh, stumbling into the of the 20th century, you know, with the, 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 the Taylor Report that, that changed all the uh, football stadia everywhere um, in Britain for, forever. I'm only uh, 29 years of age, but obviously, uh, you know, you can see all the footage and stuff, and you know, even from the now there's like advertising on shirts, um, you know, the television coverage it gets, and uh, especially even how the Premier League has changed since I since I started playing football has been unbelievable. It is now a global brand, the Premier League, and. Uh, you know, there's cameras ev on every part of the ground, and everything Premier League footballers do is, uh, is you know, it's, it's in the spotlight. And um, yeah, so I think now it is a, a massive, massive business. It's not specifically businesses that take over football clubs. It's usually the head of a business, such as a chairman of a, of a, a local business, might take over his local football club. There's a number of reasons for that. Um, Sometimes it's because they want to put something back into the community, they've got an affinity, they've done all right for themselves, they've got a few quid to throw at it, they, they want to do things like that. I, I think profile is, is a big thing um, because of the, the way the game has grown in this country uh, uh, over the last uh, 10 or 20 years. I think we're seeing bigger businesses uh, get involved to increase their own profile and because they see themselves as, as putting themselves on the map. I think there's, there's a few big egos, dare I say, uh, around as well, which are probably uh, big business wants to, wants to be involved with a successful product, and it is seen as a, uh, I hate to use the word brand, but it's, it's Premier League is a worldwide brand that, that sells to hundreds of different countries, so like any successful product, um, business wants to be associated with a successful brand and, and that's that's what's happened. Sometimes it's guys who made a lot of money and they go in and save their club and they're living a dream and uh, but often now to compete in in the Premier League and even you know in the championship and that you need money behind you um, but if you could if you can pick a team up especially in the championship and take them and turn them into a premiership sort of established team then it, you know it is big big money now the TV rights are huge if you can run the run it properly then uh, you can you can you can make a decent you know, a decent um, living, and um, it's funny, but like even when there's a, a recession or whatever, fans are fans and they're loyal, so they'll still come. And if you can get a good brand going, then people always come along. So it's it's a good business to have. You can never say that one player deserves to earn that sort of money, and in fact, it, it is obscene, really, isn't it? Because it, it's it's just a, they're just figures totally removed from reality, um, and to what was what was previously being paid in the game, but I think with the, the advent of the, the Sky money over the last uh, 20 years, uh, one of the things that has um, uh, escalated a bit beyond belief really is, is, is player salaries and uh, ever since the Bosman ruling as well, that, that, that also aided player power and, uh, and really we're seeing that we've got a situation now where the players really do hold all the aces. Well again, um, 
people seem to blame the players. You know, I'm, I'm talking on the player's side. You know, I, I've 29 years of age. I've finished through injury. I've put my body on the line. Um, I will, you know, I got, I knew what I was going into when I wanted to play football. You know, I played it because I love the game. Um, yeah, there's a financial rewards. I didn't start playing football because of that. But, you know, they come along. And if you can play in the Premier League for a good few seasons or even in the Championship, then, you know, compared to the average guy in the street, you earn good money. But if the clubs are going to make so much money for the TV rights, surely the lads who are, the, you know, the main attraction, they're the ones who train hard. They're the ones who get scrutinised in the press. They're the ones who are not playing well or they have injuries and stuff like that that, you know, have to feel the flack. So, you know, it's a short career. You want to get paid as much as you can. And say the money in the game now is astronomical. I think it's only right the players get a bit and it's supply and demand. Football has to be more community focused. It has to have people. You have to engage in the local area, the local community, local schools. And if clubs can be more aware of that and get build a crowd of support that involves young people so on and so forth, looking to play for the local club, the sport gains and people and the club's held in high regard. And it's just, you want it to be more, com more and more community focused and people to identify with the, your local football club, whether it's Starbridge or Salisbury or Truro, whoever you want, your club is, that's where you want, you'd like to see the football going. There's lots of changes that you'd make to football. There's lots of rules in football that, that put ourselves, like stadium control, we're under the same regulations to run this small stadium here that Manchester United and Manchester City and Liverpool and Arsenal are to run their massive organisations. And that's wrong. The size of your club and the size of your crowd and everything should be taken into consideration. And it's not, we have to run here with the same regulations of allowing people in and out and turnstiles and, as they do. Well, they've got 78,000 there and we've only got 500 coming here. The conference, for instance, where we were before, the conference used to get TV revenue from Satanta. Mm -hmm. Satanta went into administration or liquidation and lost the TV deal, and then everybody's money's gone. But that there's no way of replacing that now. That hasn't come back. But everything that you have to comply with when that was there is still there. Through the course of this documentary, we scrutinise the ins and outs. The professionals have had their say. And we believe that businesses will continue to take an interest in the sport until it eventually dies. And with that, I'm Chris Roberts. Thank you very much for watching.